Although he is now back on to health care, a contentious issue here in Washington, President Obama did spend part of his weekend trumpeting his success in Copenhagen. He came home with a climate agreement in hand, just not the binding agreement that would have branded that conference a triumph overall. Still, the climate community generally seems to be enthusiastic about this deal, especially after coming so close to leaving Copenhagen empty-handed altogether. Today, I talk with World Watch's Chris Flavin and also Jonathan Lash of the World Resources Institute, both of them just back from the conference, and I asked them about the Copenhagen Accord. Is it, in their minds, a full success or merely a mitigated success? A mitigated success, in my view. Uh, the conference clearly did not achieve everything that had been hoped for a year ago. Uh, but, you know, expectations have been steadily declining uh, throughout the last year. And, you know, really the, the name of the game at this point is China and the United States and moving our two countries forward. And, and arguably that occurred in, in, in the final agreement. But I do think stepping back from all of this, the whole process itself is going to need to be reevaluated. And I think there will be uh, a pre-Copenhagen and a post-Copenhagen when it comes to climate negotiations more broadly. Mm -hmm. And Jonathan, you think it's a pretty good platform, a good start. You gave it a B plus, you told me, in terms of success. Yeah, you know, I think it's a planetary emergency. And I would like to see nations commit to, to very rapid reductions in emissions and significant expenditures. I think it's going to improve everyone's lives worldwide. But this was an important foundation stone. Getting in place commitments among all the major sources of emissions, north and south, and the agreement to have those commitments verified is a huge step that was absolutely necessary to move forward. Is an agreement necessary, though? Uh, at least in word, it's nice to point to. But in practicality, uh, there are some arguments, and you've made them yourself, Jonathan, that countries will do what they do with or without a binding treaty. Yeah, I, I, I don't think treaties change behavior. Mm -hmm. I think countries that have decided to move forward form treaties in order to level the playing field. An agreement is necessary because the big economies want to know the other big economies are moving. But if there was resistance, a, a binding agreement wouldn't change that resistance. Mm -hmm. Even without the binding commitments, Chris, uh, you think nations will follow through on what they've said, at least the big five that were involved in the treaty with the U.S.? I think the process of preparing for this conference, all of the work that went on within these key governments leading up to it was important and, and, and will lead to policy change over time. Uh, but the action really is going to be at the national level and even to some extent the state level uh, going forward. Uh, because these are not legally binding commitments, uh, there is going to need to be an ongoing effort domestically within each of these countries. And I think that there's a good chance that, that all of the major countries could actually substantially exceed the goals that they've laid out for themselves. Mm -hmm. Copenhagen is going to help spur that effort, but I think only in a relatively minor way. And now enormous effort needs to be devoted to working at the national level. And I hope all of the groups that were so active, you know, not only NGOs, but businesses and others in Copenhagen will devote equal activity now to working at home. Can, can I add one thing? Please, I, please. I, I, I strongly agree with what Chris just said, but would add one observation. I have had the experience again and again of going to international negotiations and watching environment ministers negotiate something that has very little impact on their government because they're not the big players. This was not about environment ministers or lower level bureaucrats. This was heads of state sitting there in a room discussing with one another what they were willing to do. Lash, Flavin, and I also discuss what lies ahead for the international climate negotiations, what comes behind Copenhagen. You can see our entire conversation on the Clean Skies Sunday here in review next weekend. That's on the first Sunday of the new year. It's at 9.30 a.m. Eastern on ABC here in the Washington, D.C. area.